coaching has nothing to do with it. Coaching has nothing to do with winning the championship. It's the effort. It's the, <laughs> come it's on, the, man. Hey, look. Teamwork. Where's Tom Jackson and ESPN when they we, come on, look man? Look at all the great we coaches. All they do is sit and relax. We want to <laughs> talk about. about. We want to hey, talk uh, about yes, return to X and O's. Hey, return Jackson game. Had no plays. You know, when Shaq originally said that, I was stunned because this is a guy that played not only under Phil Jackson and three-peated, but also in Miami when he was out of his prime and won a championship along with Pat Riley. So out of all people, I would expect him to understand what coaching is in the NBA and how important it is to the game of basketball. But then I looked at his career and I understood why he said that because he probably had the best peak of all time in his mind and Dwayne Wade had one of the greatest playoff runs of all time. So considering the work that he did Wade and Kobe put in to win those championships, he's probably thinking, man, we did all that, not the coach. But nonetheless, that gave me the idea for this video to talk about what coaching is in the NBA and just how important is coaching towards the game of basketball. But before we go any further with this video, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsors, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is my go to sports betting app, and I have to say, I do not regret it one bit. It is so easy and simple to use. As you can see, they got the NBA, MLB, first half of the NBA. You can bet on that. That's really handy right there. WNBA, MMA, soccer, boxing, a whole bunch of sports you can bet from. And as you can see with the NBA, they got points, assists, rebounds, points, rebounds, and assists. That's usually my go to right there. Let me just bet on Giannis for that over because he's an easy over over with points, rebounds, and assists. Then you move on to other guys like Drew Holiday. I'm going to go with Drew Holiday for the over because – I'm gonna be real, he has to ball out. He had a really bad game too. He balled out in game one. That was kind of unexpected. They were in Boston, but he stepped up, and I expect them to step up in Milwaukee as they try to end out this series, or at least, you know, make competitive until Chris Middleton will come back if he does come back in this series. Then you move on to three pointers made. I'm gonna go with Bobby Portis to at least give me two threes. That ain't too hard for Bobby P. He be getting in his bag, especially when he's in front of that Milwaukee crowd. I'm gonna put that power play. All I gotta do is put twenty dollars down and I get $100. It's just that simple. And if you're not convinced, you can use my promo code mustard and all of my users will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Like I said, it's just that easy. So make sure you check out prize picks today. Link is down below in the description box. But without further ado, let's get back to talking about these coaches in the NBA. I honestly believe this is one of the better years of coaching in the NBA. I mean, you can look around the NBA and find amazing coaching jobs damn near everywhere you look. For starters, I believe the best coach in the league is Ty Lue. Ty Lue had one of the best coaching seasons of all time, in my opinion, this year. And it's so wild because if you look at Ty Lue's history, he was looked at as a joke of a coach back then in Cleveland. So many people said he should have been fired after they won that championship, but obviously LeBron and Kyrie Irving had had his back as the head coach of their team and LeBron even wanted him as the head coach for the Lakers when he went there and I'm actually glad he didn't do that because now that he has established his legacy as a coach outside of LeBron a lot of people are starting to realize what they should have realized years ago which is that he's one of the better coaches in the league and arguably the best this is a guy that has been in multiple different situations being down whether it's in a series or a game and has found a way to come through even in Cleveland they were down 3-1 in the NBA Finals finals he made great adjustments with how they defended Steph Curry and they came out with the W. You could also look at how they were down 2-0 against the Boston Celtics in 2018. A lot of people credit that to LeBron going superhuman mode which trust me he did go that but there were so many adjustments with the defensive schemes that they threw at the Celtics especially in game 7 which caused Terry Rozier and Jalen Brown to have their worst game arguably of the playoffs that year. Then you move on to his time with the Clippers so far and I have to say it's been been incredible. We all know what they did last year coming back from two consecutive 2-0 deficits in the playoffs. An amazing coaching job from him. I mean going small with Nicholas Batum at the 5 was an amazing idea and it was a big key for them to beat the Utah Jazz in the semifinals. In this season he really just cemented his status as the best coach in the league in my personal opinion. I mean with all the injuries that they had. Paul George only playing 31 games. Marcus Morris only playing 54 games. Nicholas Batum only playing 59 games and Kawhi Leonard not even playing one single game. It really is remarkable that they were not only able to finish above 500, but they were also regarded as a top 10 defense in the NBA while having five comeback victories trailing by 20 points. 
8 comeback victories trailing by 15 points and 13 comebacks when trailing by 10 points. And they also had some of the best wins of the season. They destroyed the Thunder by like 50 points in that one game. And let's not forget they had one of the greatest comebacks of all time on the Washington Wizards as they were down 35 points at a certain point in that game. Whether it was with Cleveland proving that he can come back from down 3-1 on a 73-9 team in the NBA Finals, probably the toughest coaching job in Finals history, or it's with the Clippers last year without Kawhi Leonard being able to adjust against the Utah Jazz and come back from down 2-0, or it's this season having a team that didn't even have their two best players for a majority of the year and still being above 500 and though they did lose in the play-in, they were still a very respectable team. Ty Lue has proven that the impact of coaching does matter in this NBA, but those are truly just the positive signs of what the impact of coaching is in this league. We could also look at the negative signs of what coaching does in this league and that brings me to Doc Rivers, everybody's favorite coach to slander. Doc Rivers is a very funny guy, not only because of his voice being ashy, but because every single time he's up in a series or in a game, I expect him to blow it some way, shape, or form or almost blow it. As no other coach in NBA history has not only blown more 3-1 leads, but also blown more 3-2 leads in a series as well. Doc Rivers is just infamously known for not making adjustments time in and time out. We're seeing it in these playoffs and we're going to get to that in a little bit, but we've seen it from the past of his career as well. I won't kill him too much for the blown 3-1 lead in Orlando because to be fair, they shouldn't have even been in that position to begin with and he did have a point. That roster was not that great and that was a great coaching job from him to be in that position. But nonetheless, what happened with the Clippers was really inexcusable. Doc Rivers' inability to use anybody in the offense outside of Blake Griffin and Chris Paul pick and rolls was really obvious, which was a big reason why so many people said they should trade for Carmelo Anthony and they just never pulled that trigger at all. Mind you, Doc was also the executive as well, so he had the power to make those moves and just never did so. But instead, he settled for the options of Lance Stevenson and the remnants of Paul Pierce. Yeah, look how that worked out for them. Then the infamous 3-1 lead they blew against the Rockets in the Lob City Clippers era, obviously that wasn't all on Doc Rivers, but he does deserve some blame. I mean, they were up double digits going into the fourth quarter and James Harden wasn't even on the court. The score was literally 92 to 79 and then they proceed to get outscored 40 to 15. And it wasn't because James Harden went crazy on them, but because Josh Smith and Corey Brewer? You couldn't stop Josh Smith and Corey Brewer? That truly is one of the most mind-blowing and shocking games I have ever seen in my entire life. And after never reaching a Western Conference Finals in the era of the Lob City Clippers, I would have thought he would get fired, but obviously Steve Ballmer kept him, and what happened with the era of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George on the Clippers, they blow another 3-1 lead. As the refusal to take out guys like Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, guys that were just there to be cooked on defense by Nikola Jokic and others, obviously cost them that series and inevitably his job. As it was very obvious Ty Lu was the better man for the job, as last year we saw him make adjustments that Doc Rivers just never did. The man was using Paul George as a spot up shooter for a good chunk of the season and sure Paul George has his own blame for the bubble, trust me. I've talked about PG-13's collapses in the playoffs before in previous videos, but Doc Rivers was not using him the same way that Ty Lue uses him. It's very clear that Ty Lue uses him a lot more as a ball handler and pick and roll player, meanwhile Doc Rivers never used him like that. That's why you don't see the question of, oh, the Clippers need another playmaker, they need a point guard. That stuff is not an issue anymore just simply due to the fact that everybody shares the load as a playmaker instead of what Doc was doing having Kawhi Leonard and Lou Williams be the only guys handling the ball and playmaking for the team. And then that brings us to his time in Philadelphia so far and I have to say it's just much of the same thing with Doc Rivers. Last year it was very obvious he was just stuck in his stubborn ways as Nate McMillan outcoached him. Yes you heard me correctly, Nate McMillan. The man that was fired by the Indiana Pacers a couple of years ago outcoached Doc Rivers. This isn't Mike Malone in the bubble, this is Nate McMillan and the Atlanta Hawks, the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. There were numerous times that he needed to bench Ben Simmons and he didn't do it. There were numerous times they took Trey Young, put him in the corner and let Lou Williams cook and Doc had no response for it other than having Ben Simmons just sit there on the corner on Trey Young and Lou Williams torch their defense. And because of it, despite being up in the series 3-2, they would lose as a first seed in the second round to a team that many people didn't even think would come out of the 
first round. And if you think that was all on Ben Simmons, well, how do you explain this season? As so far in the playoffs, they are still very much alive, and props to them, they just won game three against the Miami Heat, and I hope they beat those frauds. But already, the cracks are starting to show in Doc Rivers as a head coach. I mean, they were up 3-0 on the Toronto Raptors and almost blew that lead. And against the Miami Heat, without Joel Embiid, I'm not saying they were supposed to win those games, but the fact that he even had DeAndre Jordan on the court my goodness, that is a horrible decision. Because trust me, I am not exaggerating when I say this, but I firmly believe that DeAndre Jordan might be the worst player in the NBA right now. But because he still thinks it's Lob City DeAndre Jordan, his boy from back in the day of 2015 All-NBA teams, yeah, he's still gonna have faith in his old buddy to give him some minutes. Now I know some people are gonna mention his Boston championship, but trust me, he was the actual assistant of that team. We all know the real coach was Tom Thibodeau, the defensive coordinator. Because offense wasn't what won them the OA championship. It was their defense and Kevin Garnett's intensity as a leader. And I'm not saying Doc can't coach defense, but we all know that's where Tom Thibodeau specializes in. It really was just a match made in heaven having Kevin Garnett and Tom Thibodeau on the same team. So when you look at those two examples of coaches that literally had the same job back-to-back -back seasons and you see such different results with similar rosters, mind you, I don't get how you can say coaching is not very impactful towards the game. Of course, it's not the end all be all players do need to be able to perform but you have to put your players in the right position to win a championship i don't believe there's ever been a team that has won a championship where the coach was not good in the playoff run i'm not saying they were all time amazing but they made good adjustments when they needed to and made the right schemes defensively whether it was nick nurse steve kerr or ty Lu, they all made the proper adjustments in order to pull off the win and get the championship done and the two coaches i mentioned in this video are not the only signs of how impactful coaching is in this league. Just look at what Monty Williams is doing up there in Phoenix. The team basketball that they are playing on both sides of the ball is truly at an all-time level and he deserves a boatload of credit because he's been building that team up for years even before Chris Paul got there. Then you look at Taylor Jenkins for the Grizzlies and not only has he coached up that defense to being one of the better ones in the league, but this team literally turns into the 96 Bulls without Ja Morant. It's insane. Then out east, you have championship coaches that are still maintaining their proven status with guys like Nick Nurse and Eric Spolstra. And the guy that has cemented his status in the league in his rookie year, I have to give props to Udo. The emphasis that he has placed on ball movement and team defense goes without showing. The way this team started at the beginning of the season as opposed to what they are right now, it truly is astonishing to see that turnaround. And I gotta give him bonus points not only because he's Nigerian, but he bagged Nia Long? My goodness, two huge massive dubs in my book. Matter of fact, I know I said Ty Lue's the best coach in the league, but just off of those two things alone, I gotta give Udo the best coach in the league title. I'm sorry, Ty Lue. But nah, in all seriousness though, I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section. Who do you believe is the best coach in the league and how impactful is coaching on the NBA? Let me know your opinions down below. Also, do me a favor and check out the latest episode of Hoop Concessions. We talked about James Harden looking gross and other things in the second round so far. Make sure you check it out. Link is down below below in the description box. Follow me on social media, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and press that bell for post notifications. This is your boy Young Mustard signing out. Y'all stay safe and have a blessed day. Peace.